Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good day, Timo. Hi there. Um, so let me share the link again. Let's wait one more minute, then we can get started. All right, let's get started. Um, welcome everyone to the Airstream with JavaScript working group call of June 15th. Um, I need to remember you to abide by the Hyperledger Code of Conduct and the antitrust policy. Um, um, if you would like to add yourself to the tennis list, feel free to do so. I've shared the um, meeting links in the chat. Um, is anyone new here today that would like to introduce themselves or share what they're working on? Well, maybe me. I can start. Sure. Um, I've been once, I think, on the, on that meeting, but was kind of a, like a year ago or so. My name is Kalin, Kalin Sanov, and we're from the Rain Company. So we're working on an interesting project related to you. I mean, related to exchanging data and information through a DITCOM message. And one of the reasons why we're here, just to check maybe later on there is a Q&A session in regards to DITCOM version two. I seen there is a branch there and just wanted to see if someone is working, if company, if there is a, someone assign it, if there is a definite tasks. And if there is a definite task, which are kind of a clear, maybe we can, share some of our great developers to to help and finalize that that part of the framework yeah cool good to hear and uh, welcome uh, i think uh, i added it for the agenda for today uh, um if artem is here to give an update but we can definitely uh, discuss it yeah cool very good Anyone else? hey everyone uh i'm jorge flores uh, I'm here uh, with a couple of my team members, uh, first time on this call. Uh, we've been longtime followers of the Aries community uh, and consumers of, of the work uh, that this great community has been uh, contributing. Uh, we are uh, part of Entidad. We're a social impact startup who are uh, in the process of building technology for underserved communities. Um, and our first use case is a, a, a farm worker mobile wallet actually built on top of uh, Aries. And we're hoping for an opportunity to present today uh, a demo of a low code wallet engine that uh, is built on top of uh, this great community, the Aries framework JavaScript. Um, so. Cool. Yeah, uh, definitely want to have that uh, uh, demo. So I think um, we can add it to the to the to the end of the agenda. Um, we do really uh, want to discuss some wallet API stuff today because we've I think already postponed it for like six six weeks. Uh, but if there's still time left, and otherwise uh, we can put it first thing uh, uh, on next week's call, if that's okay for you. Uh, Timo, Timo, I will I will suggest if if we can. If we can do this demo before, because I know that for Jorge is is very hard to to attend this meeting. It's six a.m. there, so I prefer to to just uh, be sure that that he will be able to to do the stuff because you know. Okay, then, cool. Then, then we... Jorge, then. Uh, yeah, no, cool. Then um... don't worry. It, it, the, the wallet API will be very very quick as well, so don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. No, I just want I didn't want to push you forward again. Uh, but if you're uh, okay with it, then uh, <laughs> cool. Um, anyone else that would like to introduce themselves? 
Uh, hey everyone, I'm Zdravko. Um, Kalin is my teammate and he already explained it, uh, about uh, our project. Cool, good to have you here. Yeah, also together with us, we have uh, Bobby. I think you a couple of times you exchanged some messages back and forth with uh, Bobby. He's also, I mean, from our team together with Alexei Lunin. So I think you met already, I mean, at least virtually. And if I'm not mistaken, last week you met in um, in Zurich, our C CEO, Georg Greve. Yeah, we discussed yeah, that. We did yeah. Short, uh, discussion on, on Bitconfi too. And uh, yeah, exactly. you said uh, your team uh, will join this week's call. Uh, so Definitely. yeah. <laughs> um, cool. Um, well, I see Jakub is on the call also again today. Welcome, Jakub. Long time no see. Um, yeah, I, I guess, I guess I, I'm back yeah. after a long time. So yeah, today just just watching probably only, uh, but great to be here again. Yeah, cool. Um, okay, so on the agenda for today, um, we have a demo uh, from Jorge. Uh, I want to do a quick update on the zero for zero release just like we have released it, what's the status, uh, what's next steps. Um, then we have the wallet API discussion. Um, we have a did config two discussion if Artem is here today and otherwise like, let's see what, what's left and how can we get it uh, merged. And then there was some stuff on the revocation PR from Ariel and, and other open issues, PRs and, 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 and that kind of stuff. Any, any important things we need to add to the agenda? Um, Otherwise, we can also add them to the future topics or for next week. But uh, yeah, please shout if you if you want something discussed. All right, then, uh, Jorge, can you uh, do you want to share your screen? Yeah. So um, we'll just do briefly. I'll just introduce kind of the. The project and uh, just have a couple slides, and then I'll hand it over to Ockert, who will actually be presenting the demo. Perfect. Okay, so uh, to begin, uh, just to give some context, uh, what we're doing is. Um, we're building an Aries digital trust ecosystem uh, to facilitate uh, farm worker serving organizations to transact digitally in a secure and privacy preserving manner. Um, historically, here in the US, uh, by the way, we're, we're based out of the United States. Um, I'm in Southern California and Ocarid is in uh, South Africa. Um, historically, uh, farm workers are excluded from US labor laws. And you know their essential workforce, uh, the backbone of our food supply chain. And so uh, we're hoping that with technology that we're building will allow uh, farm workers to be able to trust trust technology, learn to trust technology, uh, and be able to do, you know uh, transact digitally. Um, this is an example. These are screenshots of a of an app that we've developed on top of uh, it's a React Native app. And uh, the idea for the, for the app is to uh, serve uh, as a single channel uh, from a farm worker perspective, uh, a wallet holder can build a digital identity profile that makes it easier for them to access services. Uh, and so this, this, this app we call Preparase, that's Spanish for get ready, uh, prepare yourself. And, and that's in the context of uh, a farm worker or large, comprehensive uh, farm worker uh, immigration reform that we're expecting from, from our government uh, to give farm workers a path to legal residency or citizenship. And so the idea is that here's an app where you can collect your information, build your identity profile, and then have the means through an ARIES enabled ecosystem, uh, DITCOM, uh, credential exchange, et cetera, to be able to transact. Uh, and so we have one service that's live in the, in, in the app, and that is Alivio. Um, uh, it's a pandemic relief. It's a program um, 
uh, funded by the uh, by the U U United States Department of Agriculture. So our client, uh, the United uh, the United Farm Workers Foundation, and eight sister organizations were a recipient of a grant from the USDA of almost a hundred million dollars to distribute in direct pandemic assistance to eligible farm workers in the form of six hundred dollar payments. Um, so that's kind of in a nutshell uh, where we're at. Um, and now I'll pass it over to Ockard to present um, the framework that we, we've developed on top of Aries JS that really serves as the wallet engine for the app. And the idea is that this, uh, we're building on top of a low code platform. And the idea is that we could take this wet, uh, wallet engine and allow other communities, other developers to build similar apps uh, for their respective constituents. Uh, uh, so I'll just pass it over to Akert. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Okat, also from Entidad, and I'll show you some of our progress. Just a second. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Um, on the left hand side, we have the BC wallet uh, demo, and on the right hand side is the um, progress using Aries JS in our platform index. And I'll just fire up the agent. Whoops. What's going on? Just a second. Let's try it again. Good work now. <laughs> Okay, so uh, agents initialized and we can get started with the BC demo. And we're not going to use this wallet, we're going to use our own agent. Uh, establish the connection. And with the connection established, we uh, receive credential from Best BC College, and there's a credential claim, student first name, expiry date. And we accept the credential. Okay, and then we can go move on with the next of the uh, uh, where you can get a discount at an online store. 
and we have this uh, the connection is established with bc college and we have uh, a single credential student card and with that um, credential uh, and the connection to uh, we're going to establish a cool uh, connection to cool close online and we're going to get our student card And now Google Close Online um, wants us to present our student card. And for the next one, we want to book a study room. We'll need our student card again. And that concludes the demonstration for this. We can also demonstrate um, uh, Litcom messaging. So on the left-hand side, I have uh, another phone that I'm mirroring. Um, we can, just a second. start the agent this side <laughs> uh, we can produce an invite Scan it with the other phone. So now I established between the um, two agents and we can use DITCOM messaging. Um, in a basic chat. That's what we have to demonstrate. Cool. I um I would be curious, could you tell a bit more on the like the, the Mendix part of it and the the um the low code stuff? Okay, yes, so that's also relevant. Um, I'll show you. A bit more about the tool. Can you see the screen? Yeah. Um, so this is the IDE. It's a very um, graphical uh, kind of way of programming. You have a database designer where you can set up your um, tables, entities, as they call it, uh, in Mendix. Uh, you have a, a flow design where you can design your flows and flows can execute uh, in a client or on the server. The server executes in Java and in the client in JavaScript, in JavaScript and the JavaScript can run in the browser or in, um, in React Native. And you can extend uh, stock actions with uh, custom actions. For example, this one uh, is um, deleting uh, connection by ID and then you can create your own custom actions and we're using um, Aries uh, AFJ um, actions and for the 
the Minix also has a graphical page designer. So you can also very easily design pages, buttons, inputs, and things of this nature. And uh, we took the, the most of the ERIES library and um, created custom actions um, for most of the API functions. And that's a bit more about the Mendix tool, the tool that we're using. I'll just add a little more, um, a little more uh, color to 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 Mendix. Uh, <clears throat> Mendix is a low code platform. They're they're a leader in 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 that particular space as a low code application platform. Uh, if you look up, um, but if you go to Mendix.com, um, they're they're leaders in the Gartner Magic Quadrant. Um, Mendix boasts a uh, uh, a thriving developer community of three hundred thousand across the across the globe, um, and so it's it's pretty active community. There's a there's a public marketplace where you find uh, functionality that's published by other developers. Some of some of it is for pay. Uh, a lot of it is open source, and that's uh, you know part of the value proposition for us as a. a Technology provider serving, uh, working with nonprofit organizations, it really is a great tool for us to be able to build high quality, security first uh, applications, and um, and and do it in a way where you know we you don't need an army, um, you can you can get to market very quickly uh, with with this platform, and so it's it's been great for us, and we hope to be able to contribute some of the work that we've done uh, to, to, to open source it, like this, uh, this wallet engine that, uh, that Anker just demoed. The idea is that any Mendix developer can import that Aries SDK module into their app project and immediately start to be able to leverage uh, that functionality to, to continue to build the, you know, on Aries ecosystems. Cool. That's that's really cool to hear. Awesome. Any questions from from people uh, for Jorge or Okkert? Cool. I think there was a, a question in the chat on what is built on React Native. Uh, I, I think you answered it uh, uh, in the thing. It's, it's built on like, uh, it is built on React Native, right? With the Mendix platform. That's correct. Yeah. So uh, the way it works is you build your apps in, in the studio, the, the designer, and then uh, there's a build, uh, there's a build uh, capability uh, that kind of where it allows you to uh, also in a in a graphical builder a UI that uh, takes a native template that's been customized by Mendix to be able to inject their dependencies into into a React Native framework, and so so all of the dependencies that you introduce uh, have to be uh, compiled into that native template, and then you, you you have the ability to to build your apps. But it it's React Native, yes. Um, and then also it, it has a server side component which could easily integrate with um, AFJ uh, running a node uh, using REST. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. Oh. And you're, okay. you're now on the 03 release or, or have you upgraded to the 04 of AFJ? <laughs> I, I think that's the the uh, oh I'm I'm sorry is is the versioning um, actually a good question for Ocker like what what version of the Aries JS did did you did you present today? Um, zero point three point three. Okay. Yeah. 
one of the things uh, uh, we we've been kind of working on, we introduced um, the concept of uh, contributing this this package to uh, basically want to open source it, and we've been following the conversation around the Open Wallet Foundation, and we we had been preparing to present this as as kind of a project for that Open Wallet Foundation. But um, we've been following the conversation with the Aries community and, you know, just trying to trying to see how that plays out. Um, we we wanted to, the opportunity to present this work to the Aries community, just so you guys are aware that there, there are folks out there that are actually building on top of your great work. And uh, hopefully uh, if, if we meet, if, if we move forward with the Open Wallet Foundation, that that's, you know, we just, we wanted to make sure that that wasn't gonna be uh, a cause of friction with, with the community. But I think that based on yesterday's meeting, uh, I think that the collaboration there or the interest in collaborating is is there, so anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can go into the discussion of uh, o o yeah, OWF and IRIS uh, maybe a bit later if we have some more time. Uh, uh, um, yeah, but cool. I think uh, either one is fine. I think, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Alberto. Yeah, hello. Uh, nice to meet you, Jorge. Uh, nice to meet you, Timo. This is my first time joining this meeting. Um, just a quick question for you, Jorge. Um, is there any way or have you considered a solution to build on top of existing apps? So let's say I have an, a native uh, iOS or native Android. Is there a way I can integrate a wallet SDK functionality? So I can do like, for example, uh, send proof requests, uh, offer credential, um, is there anything like that um, that you've thought of, or maybe not even just for Jorge, but for everyone else? Is there anything similar to that? Because I think the community has uh, like Bifold, right, which is a React Native project that you can build from zero. But what if there's a use case or a business use case where someone wants to get credentials on an existing app? Yeah, so that's that's pretty much what we've done. Uh, and Akhir, I think if you can show him the the npm build command, so that you can take your existing React Native um, uh, solution and just add the the Aries JS dependencies. I think you just have to add the Aries framework, the core, and the and the ND SDK. Right, but what if I have a let's say an Objective C app or a Swift app? Like a native oh. code, not necessarily oh, React Native. I see. I I I'm not uh, entirely familiar with some of the other um, uh, Aries projects, but I I believe I see I keep seeing an Aries Samarin uh, uh, working group example, but I don't know. I think maybe someone else from the community can answer that. So, uh, Warren, is your uh... Do you want to answer that question or do you have a separate question? Uh, I have a partial answer to that question, I think. Uh, one is that um, I believe that the uh, Xamarin base is not being actively pursued. I may be mistaken about that. I'm not really plugged into that, uh, but that's my impression. Uh, but there was also a project uh, presented in one of the Aries meetings, I think it may have been at Acapug, uh, which was a Swift implementation that has been offered up to the community. Um, so it's not based on AFJ, it's a completely new, I think it may have been modeled on AFJ, but it's a completely new implementation based on, um, on Swift. Uh, and for the Android side, I don't really know. Yeah, yeah, I think I've filed the, the Swift framework, which is making good progress. Um, um, yeah, I think native apps is complex still. Um, and we've yeah. seen a lot of times also. Um, and um, every time when also our clients ask it, it, it's like we mainly answer with like, yeah, it's just not something we really 
had an issue with ourselves because we mostly either build new apps or integrate it in React Native applications. Um, you can run like React Native and add it to a, like a native project and let the, the, the framework be handled by that. But I think that adds a lot of complexity. So um, in that case, um, yeah, other languages maybe such as Aeros Framework Swift or there's like a, a, an implementation in Rust which allows you to call it from um, both um, I think uh, iOS and Android. I think then other solutions, um, yeah, uh, you would need to look at other solutions or come up with a complex thing. Um, I think that is yeah. one of the limitations of um, having this framework implemented in, in JavaScript compared to something like Rust. No, that's 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 totally fair, yeah. And I think those are good answers. Um, we actually dug very deep into this. Yes, and Arias Go is another option. We have yeah. wrappers that build uh, libraries for it, but it doesn't seem active in the channels anymore. I know Trustblack has something called Wallet SDK, which they're big contributors to the Arias uh, Go framework. Uh, and yes, like you mentioned, the Rust and then there's Swift, uh, but none of them seem to be uh, like truly mature enough to to consider it as an SDK native implementation. But yes, uh, no, I appreciate the answer. Uh, thank you, Jorge. Thank you, Timo. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's it's a uh, it's a tough uh, a, a, a tough thing, and I think also something to consider is always the question like um uh, do we want one implementation and and reuse that i think if you have very complex stuff um 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 you probably want to do that like browser engines you don't want to re-implement that for different uh platforms but i think like a lot of libraries are okay but so i think it's it's a bit of a trade-off like there's a lot of complexity involved in in exposing things to separate languages so uh um I think that was also one of the goals of this framework, um, at least for us, is that like with a lot of these things, if you wanted to change something, you had to go like three layers deep in some very low level Rust code. Um, and, and this, yeah, allows a lot more flexibility by having the logic implemented in JavaScript. But yeah, uh, Jorge. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add that um, I, I'd like to, I don't know if you, you've considered this or where you are in your stage, but uh, there's also the so the option of you know finding a, a hosted solution right and then integrate your your native app through through apis and rest api calls uh that's actually how we started um you know that's that 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 gave us the opportunity to figure out our 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 framework to, to, to for app development but also learn aries and learn the Aries protocols in the process and now you know now, because because of that learning experience, now then we're able to dig deeper into the into the weeds and actually try to get this uh, this function directly embedded. But, but um, I just want to throw that out there for you. Mm, interesting. Um, can you point me to uh, how much is? Do you, does anybody know what's the best place to go for those API endpoints or how those are managed within the Hyperledger? Is there a specific repo for that? Um, so it depends a bit on like whether you want to use um, an open source implementation, and then you can can use uh, something like Aris Cloud Agent Python, or you can use Aris Framework JavaScript. But you would have to like add your API endpoints yourself. Like we don't. There is an um, uh, a REST extension, but it it's um, um, it's still from two versions old so it hasn't been updated um that much so that's not the best and there's also um um like paid cloud services that you could leverage for this for example Trinsic is 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 one where they provide just api um uh, endpoints where you can just have cloud wallets uh, managed for you okay all right no thanks um just one last question um maybe either or hey, maybe, maybe you're a little bit close to it. Currently in the development process, we're trying on different things. One of those things is actually creating a web view in the native um, app, right? Create a web view 
and that connects to some sort of JavaScript, right? Um, so we're also, and then that JavaScript will have AFJ, but that would be technically like a remote wallet in a sense, I guess. So uh, have you guys gone through that path before? Has anybody tried that or any comments uh, before I dig more deep into this POC I'm trying to build? Um, what do you guys think? Does that, does that infringe maybe some of the concepts of SSI? Um, so, um, are you talking about running a web view and running AFJ in that web view or through a remote? Yes. API? Yeah. Something like that. Technically it'd be, it looks like a lot like an API now when I think of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it, you would have to implement like the current dependencies we have for, uh, Airstream JavaScript, the native stuff that handles storage and crypto and, and all the, the heavy, uh, stuff that, um, is only available for React Native and Node.js. So if you were to do it in, in the browser, you can run the framework, the core in the browser, but you would need to provide your own bindings for crypto signing and verification and storage. And so those aren't implemented by default. So it's a, an interesting path to explore. I would like to have like default browser uh, 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 packages available, but we don't have those yet. So there would be more work involved than, for example, running it in a React Native okay. environment. Okay, no, good answer. Thank you, Tim. All right, well, thank you. Sorry for hijacking. There's... There, there is one there is one other thing to look at and I, i've only looked at it very fleetingly so i can't speak to it authoritatively um but there's another framework in typescript uh from veramo and veramo does have uh at least some support for aries protocols and my understanding is that it's attempting to um run in react native and in node and in browser um and how they're doing that i don't know and how well it works i don't know like so there's a lot of i don't knows here uh, uh but um it, it's another approach that does at least have some areas protocol support and it seems to be that part of it seems to be growing but i would expect that making it work in the browser as timo said will be a challenge because of the if you want to use the existing rust libraries and stuff for all the crypto then uh you're you're kind of and storage you're kind of sunk yeah i think uh Vramo is a is a great option also uh, i think they have initially been more focused on w3c credentials and and um so uh there has been work recently to support ditcom v2 and also have to issue credential and present proof protocols, but you can't use it with um, Anocrats credentials. Um, they mostly use like web crypto APIs, which allows them to um, run it easily in the browser. But for example, like some, some APIs like Anocrats, um, we can't easily run that in the browser. There has been some work going on uh, um, um, to get it working um, and compile it to Wasm. Um, and I think we can do that also with other dependencies, but that is more of like a ongoing thing. So um, depending on what your needs are, I think Framo could be a great way if you want to um, integrate it, yeah, in a, in a browser environment. All right, thank you, thank you all. Uh, but Timo, I remember that you have a, you had a, a demo or a, or or some ongoing pro pro uh, uh, work on the on some browser wallet or something like that, right? Um. Yeah. So I've I've started some work. wallet. I don't know. Yeah, multiple times on like uh, integrating uh, um, AFJ in the browser. Um, but mostly the the Ditcom part, I've I've worked on that and like an in memory storage, but um, uh, not really the the Anocrats part. The, but Berend has done work on 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 that, uh, and someone else also. So it should be possible. It's just I think it's not really used yet. People haven't used the framework a lot yet for browser environments um, yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So um, 
about uh, um, so sorry for, yeah. but for, for, for unknown creds uh, what's preventing us to to compile it to wasm so it has been compiled to wasm and it runs in the browser and for um, the holder side of things, it actually works pretty well. I think uh, it was it was somebody else that that worked on on that, um, um, and they got it compiled uh, uh, to Wasm. And so holder side works relatively well. It goes wrong if you do the other like uh, issuer side because uh the crypto libraries that the browser has are um it uses like something with the ssl library which makes it like if you want to generate a credential definition with a few attributes it takes a few minutes to <laughs> to generate it but i think for the holder side it was actually pretty doable um yeah but so it it is possible but it's not something like uh, it was a proof of concept um, to get it. Like we would need to have uh, another uh, library that handles anonymous and then expose the wasm files and have a build process for it. So I think the the, the missing piece here would be having it like uh, released as a package and being uh, yeah installable from npm. Okay, no, but 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 anyway, if 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 we can manage to to run it at the, at least on the holder side, it, it will be a a very good uh, advance, right? Because that will mean that probably we will we will not force people to install a, a native application uh, or re React Native application. Uh, I mean, it can run on, on a mobile browser. So for, for some cases, it could be very, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. I We've been looking at um, like Wasm. Um, more also because you know, have like uh, for a lot of environments you have wasm micro run times which makes it possible to uh, run wasm from um, ios android browsers node.js react native and so um, it would be a really nice way if you can just compile anything to wasm then you can run it r literally on any platform um, um, without much um, hassle so yeah i think generally wasm is a an interesting thing to explore also for other environments than the browser. Um, cool. Uh, Ariel, do you want to do your wallet presentation for the last 15 minutes? Okay, okay, okay. let me see. Okay. Yeah, actually, okay. I prefer some, some slides, but actually it's more, more, more like a, a discussion or more questions than sounds than answer so <laughs> let's see what happens um a moment i think i cannot I cannot share my screen now. You can't, or? I will try that. You know, know if you can see something, anything. Ah, I have to allow Zoom to do it. I think I will need to re enter the, to rejoin the, the, the meeting. So, ah, okay. Um, so do you think guys will have some time to discuss the other points of the agenda like Ditcom and the uh, the new version of the AFJ? Because there is a 13 more minutes. Uh, yeah, so uh, um, we'll do the wallet discussion and if we have time, we'll uh, um, move on to the to the other topics and otherwise we'll have to uh, uh, postpone them to uh, uh, to next week, if that's okay. Okay, that's it. Can you see the my screen now? No. Yeah, oh. we can. <laughs> okay, so I will some discussion about the wallet API. So 
Um, well, as you know, a small part of the framework, uh, the wallet, the wallet module is widely inspired on on what on what came from from the in the SDK, the the beloved in the SDK. So um, what we will like to to discuss today is a bit how can how can we uh, change a little bit the the way it it works in order to be able to more easily uh, use different uh, wallet types uh, and also to make it easier to 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 handle different wallets and 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 and, and, and list the wallets and, and and delete and I mean do the administrative stuff with with wallets and also uh, to handle the, the 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 data that we have in the wallet like the keys for instance so uh, at the moment as you may know the the agent I, I, an agent to be up and running needs uh, two steps to work like the construction and the initialization step. Um, as some modules on the project on the framework depend on the on the wallet because they need probably to uh, fetch some records or do some stuff with them, uh, they need to to have a, a a wallet, right? So we can for for the moment we can specify the wallet configuration right on the constructor or we can do it somewhere in the middle and then call the, 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 initial, the initialize for, for the agent initialization. Um, something that we, we were discussing some months ago, I, I guess with Timo was that maybe we can, we can uh, remove this wallet configuration from the wallet from the agent init configuration and delegate that to the module that is actually providing the wallet. This is uh, something that would be useful because uh, it's, it's hard to define a generic wallet configuration uh, object because usually it's true that they, every wallet has a, an, an ID and probably a password or something like that, or a passphrase or something like that. But there are also some other configuration stuff, like in this case, we have the key de derivation method that is not exactly the same, for instance, here in the in ASCAR and, and in, in the SDK. And also the storage configuration. In this case, we are, we are uh, using this parameter to specify if we are going to use um, SQLite or, uh, or Postgres database, but it's likely that other wallet types because you know, ASCAR is also based somehow in Indy. So they are more or less similar, but if you're going to use different modules for, for, for wallet management, it's likely that they are, this will not work exactly. And it will be hard to define at the core level and the, the core layer, all the, the, the constants and, and types to, to be able to be useful for, for every kind of, 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 of wallet types. Uh, so, and then now we have, I have list here, here how our wallet module API looks like. So we have uh, all these met methods like initialize, create, create and open, open. We can do a key rotation, delete a wallet. Uh, export and import, and, and also we have those these uh, methods to create key and generate nouns. Um, we can see that here we have <laughs> we have lots of methods, and 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 probably and some of them are related to the, uh, the uh, wallet administration, and some of them for the wallet uh, operation, like this one for create a key or or generate a nouns. And uh, I don't know if, if the users of the framework have, have noticed that recently from, since the 030, we have this agent context, uh, agent context uh, 
concept where we can access the wallets of the of the, 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 the framework instance. So it's hard to, to tell what's the difference between using the, the wallet from here or the, uh, let's say the, the agent wallet it's, it's, it's. So it, it can be some uh, somehow confusing. So maybe we can we can uh, just try to separate the wallet API from the wallet interface. I mean the the, the, the actual uh, wallet that is opened by the by this context. So in, in such a way that for the wallet API we will only use those methods related to the to the administrations. Of any kind of uh, of wallet like uh, agent uh, wallet creation, uh, deletion, um, uh, rotate key, export and import, and uh, leave all the operative methods uh, for the wallet instance like uh, create keys and uh, uh, while signing and verifying and, and all that stuff. At the moment, if you look at the at the wallet API code, I will see if I can I can show you. If you see, if if you look at the wallet API, we'll see that we are almost every everywhere calling the the wallet object to do everything. It's most more like an an expose than than, than other things. So what we can probably do is to to create a wallet service, I will a wallet service that will be provided by the by the module that is uh, is providing the, the, the wallet itself. So that wallet service will be the the one uh, giving us the methods to uh, import and export and and, and and that stuff. This is a here. I left a question. Do we really need a, a wallet module and API on the core? Maybe we can delegate everything to the to the Ascar module or the NDSP module or whatever module. So, but anyway, I will. I, I left some some of the of how the wallet API can be simplified. So we can have here the these methods methods for for wallet creation and opening. Actually, I don't see a reason of to have it, to have an create and open because we can probably put that, put that here in the in the options. And also for uh, for wallet find to to find a wallet uh, to delete wallets to export and import without being necessarily the wallet that we have open right now, right? And um, well, I have so many, so many, so many times. So I will, I will go go faster. Uh, and for the for the wallet interface, currently we have all these methods. We have methods for wallet administration. We have methods for export and import. Actually, this is pretty weird because. This method that, that does not uh, do not work with an open wallet. You will need to close the wallet and export it or or, or, or import it. So for me, it doesn't make any sense to have a wallet object that is actually more than that has some methods that actually are more like static methods because they are not actually related to to, to this particular instance. We have these methods for 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 uh, key management and and using like this signing data or, or verifying, and also we have these uh, these methods for for message packing and unpacking of uh, Litcom messages in, in this case. So well, here's more or less what we have see uh, I have said. And um, what can I propose is to well, remove all that re that is re related to the administration from from this uh, class, and uh, probably add add a few methods for for key management, like 
finding and delete keys, which is something that is missing here in, right now. And uh, for the message per packing and unpacking, I know that it's difficult to separate the packing from the wallet module itself, but probably we can uh, call another object or something to, to, to not make the, the class, the, the, the wallet implementation uh, very he heavy, like is in the, in the case of, the, I have seen in the case of the uh, Bitcoin V2 branch that it's about 1,000 lines or something like that because uh, Artem had to, to, to add all the logic for, for Bitcoin V1 and V2 and, 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 and all that stuff. So more or less like that. We have methods for opening and closing and deleting the, the current wallet. I mean, the, sorry, the, the, this instance to create, find and delete keys, to sign and verify data. This is the methods for, for DITCOM and also some generic method to generate generate uh, nonces and, and keys with options. I mean, the, what kind of keys we want to generate and, 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 and so on. Well, I have one minute, so if you, you want to comment, Tim or someone. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think we have a lot of time to, to go into detail. Um, I think uh, a lot of stuff you said makes sense. So maybe if you can share the, uh, the link to the slides, then we can put them in a meeting note and then um, I can leave some comments. And if people would like to, to share their thoughts on the wallet API, uh, um, they can do it on the document and then maybe next week uh, um, we can we can discuss the uh, those topics okay okay yeah I, I will i will do that and also maybe I, I will i will add a discussion on the github yeah maybe we can we can comment there as well yeah perfect um yeah thanks for this presentation this 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 good this makes sense um Sorry that we didn't get to uh, the Ditcom V2 topic. Um, I'm going to add it to the agenda for um, next week, first thing, so that we make sure that we get to it. Um, and also a bit on the 040 stuff, then we make that the two main topics. And I'll also ask Artem to, to join um, uh, and share some things on, on Ditcom V2. Uh, right. We'll try to join them next week because at the very same time we have a workshop in Braunschweig and at the very same time, but at least we'll try some some of us to join and that stuff was important to be there. Bobby and Lunin as well. We'll see how to arrange it. I mean, the only thing is to see how it's, what's the status and if there is a, some, some way if we can help that probably, you know, may speed up the things. Because yeah. we really need, we have some quite interesting project. I want to share yet what exactly is, as I said, is sending data through a DITCOM, but also we want to try it with, um, um, in combination with RS framework Golang and Mediator. So it's, you see it. I mean, that's why we, we want to have that. We did that with the version one, DITCOM version one, but we want to, want to have it in D2 because ARES framework Go is only on version DITCOM, is using on DITCOM version two. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, no, we'll uh, make sure to discuss it next week. Okay. Good. Cool. Thanks, everyone, and see you next week. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye for now. Thank you, Bye. Bye.